Hey guys, it's Danny here, and in this episode we're going to be trying to start this 1987 Porsche 944S that I bought for a thousand bucks. Now, with a car like this that hasn't run in about six years or more, you don't want to just, you know, put a battery in and crank the key and hope for the best because you could do some pretty, some pretty serious harm like that. So, we're going to go through a couple of steps to make sure that this engine is ready to start. Now, these steps are going to be pretty applicable to just about any car that hasn't run in a long time, whether, you know, it's, you know, a classic Chevy or a modern BMW, it doesn't matter. If it's been sitting for a while, you're probably going to want to do some prep work before you try to start it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the old gas out. Now, gas has a usable lifespan of about six to eight months, maybe a year if you put some fuel stabilizer in. And I know for a fact this does not have any of that stuff in there. And besides, it's been six years, so... It's probably not going to be good gas in there anyways. I uh, I opened the little valve over there not too long ago, or rather I opened it a few days ago and there was some nasty brown goop uh, coming out of there, so that's not a good sign. Alright, so we're going to start by emptying out the gas, the old gas, whatever's left of it. Now, the way we do this is we're going to have to lift the rear end of the car up to get some access to the gas tank. And to get better access to the gas tank, we're also going to remove the, uh, the rear passenger side wheel. It'll be interesting to remove that and see what's behind there anyways after all these years. Maybe there's some brakes back there too. Who knows? Okay, so now we have the wheel removed and we can see the uh, fuel filter right there. Looks nice and shiny, so I wonder how recently that's been changed. And right there, this big thing, right, this big bulky thing, that's the uh, fuel tank. So there's a little strap, as you can see, going there vertically. And once you remove that strap with the 13 millimeter bolt at the top, we should be able to remove this little um, block off panel or cover rather. And that's what where the fuel pump will be, along with you know the connection to the tank itself, which where we which is where we want to drain it from. But uh, one interesting thing to note, you can see the uh, the transaxle there. The 944, as you may or may not know, has the transmission back here instead of in the front of the car, like in most cars. Also another thing to note, the suspension here is pretty weird. There's no spring at all, and there's just one big control arm thing, wishbone thing looking here. So that's kind of interesting. Cool. Anyways, let's get that cover off, and then we'll go from there. Alright, so after making a little bit of a mess, or a rather big mess, I've gotten most of the gasoline out, if not all of it. Some went into this bucket, and then some went into that drain pan over there. I'm going to take out that strainer in a sec, just to double check that there's nothing actually clogging the screen. And you can kind of see fuel pumps right there, and the fuel filters up there. So the fuel pump, I'm not sure if it's good or not, but we'll leave it there for now. The fuel filter will replace next, but uh, just check out this gasoline I drained first. Check out this gasoline I drained. It's a uh, pretty nasty looking, pretty brown and dark and pretty gross, really. I mean, gasoline's supposed to be, you know, pretty much colorless, not uh, not brown like that. That is old gasoline. That's at least, you know, five or six years old or, or however many years this thing sat, so that stuff's nasty. This stuff was so gross that when it got on my skin, I actually felt a burning sensation, and normally that doesn't really happen with gas. I'm usually able to tolerate it pretty well. So, uh, yeah, exercise caution, I guess, when you're draining this nasty stuff. Okay, so we removed the fuel strainer, which was just a 17 millimeter bolt right here. Rather 17 millimeter nut. This actually looks pretty clean and new. So I suspect it's been replaced at some point in the past decade or so. But that's a good sign. The um, the gas tank itself looks quite clean too. If you can kind of see inside there. See, it looks pretty darn clean in there. So I don't have anything to worry about in terms of rust or anything gross. So I'm just going to put this, I'm going to reinstall this, uh, this, fil this screen. And then we're going to move on to replacing the, um, the fuel filter. And, that'll, and then we'll be just about done with the fuel system. Alright, so to get the fuel filter out, I uh, 
or to get one side of the fuel filter loose, I just removed the, uh, the fuel pump assembly completely. So the fuel pump is surrounded in this rubber casing thing, and then it's held in there with like a hose clamp into that like whole shield thing. Here's what the fuel pump itself looks like. It's not the in-tank kind, it sits outside the tank. See, it's pretty cool. It, it, this is a, uh, I don't know if you can see, but this is a Bosch fuel pump. See right there, Bosch. I don't know what year this is or what age this is, but uh, this doesn't look too bad. There was fuel in the fuel pump and there was fuel in the filter itself, which makes me think that the pump was doing its job to an extent. Now, I don't know if the pressure is correct, so we'll have to, you know, double check all that. But uh, another interesting discovery I made is the uh, the hose that connects the uh, the fuel pump to the actual tank. It was starting to swell up and there's like a section that's starting to burst a little bit. So that would have been a pretty nasty surprise. So I'm happy I caught this before anything happened. So, you know, I'm going to go and get some uh, some replacement fuel hose. This feels pretty stiff anyways. And then we're going to pop that on. Then we're going to kind of put put the uh, the new filter on. And then we're going to put this all back together. But I'm not going to put the shield on. I'm just going to put the basic components together. And I'm just going to kind of let it hang for now. Just, you know, for troubleshooting's sake. And then once everything is, you know, running, we'll get it all back together. So next I just got to take the rest of that fuel filter off. So this is the old fuel filter. It, uh, a lot of nasty contaminated fuel came out of there, so it's definitely due for a replacement. The date stamp on there says it's from 2009, so that's, uh, what, seven or eight, that's eight years old now, so definitely needs to be replaced, especially since it's been sitting for so long. So what we have here is a brand new one, same brand Molly. We're gonna put that in over there. Should be pretty simple, it's just a reverse of a removal. And we have this new fuel line to replace the fuel line that was starting to go bad. And one thing to note is this is straight fuel line, so I'm just gonna make this work for now. But I am gonna order the proper uh, bent U-shaped line from Auto House for when we get this all put back together. Right now I just want everything connected, you know, for troubleshooting. So I'm just gonna put everything back together as best as I can. All right, so here's the fuel system put back together. It's kind of a hodgepodge ghetto job right now, but this is just for troubleshooting. I, I don't intend to drive this anywhere with the fuel system dangling around, but there's the new fuel filter there, brand new. There's the uh, running, runs to the fuel pump, and then there's a brand new line there, clamped at both sides. Everything's connected. Um, normally this resides in like a little thing that goes there. Okay, that's what it resides in. But we're skipping that for now. We're just gonna, you know, I wanna just make sure that the fuel is actually getting to the engine right now before we do anything else. Um, I'm gonna order the proper bent hose for this at uh, Auto House. So now let's put the wheel back on, put this thing back on the ground, and then we're gonna go and uh, change the oil. Okay, so now we have the Porsche jacked up. There's just like a uh, central jack point on the sides. And yeah, that's the official way to do it. There is a front subframe that you can use to jack it up, but the uh, manuals say to do it from the side jack points, so that's what I'm going with. Anyways, everything under here looks relatively clean. That AC compressor looks pretty uh, recent. You know, nothing too crazy. Oil pan looks pretty nasty, but that's kind of a given. I think it might just be the um, the oil pan drain bolt. I think that's the only thing that looks kind of bad here. As you can kind of see how everything's pretty much rust free under here. There's not really anything to be concerned about, or not too concerned about. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get a drain pan and crack that bolt loose and uh, see what comes out. All right, so we've drained about the majority of the oil out at this point. There's just a little trickle left, and uh, yeah, everything came out pretty well. I mean, the drain plug came off pretty easily, so it wasn't over torqued. Everything looked, you know, decent. Uh, the oil that came out was not totally black, which I'm pretty happy about. It's got a, uh, it's got a bit of a reddish tinge to it, but that just could be the brand of the oil that they used. 
But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to let this finish draining and then we're going to try and get the uh, oil filter out. Okay, so now the car is back on the ground, we're going to remove the oil filter. As you can see, it's, uh, it's right there under the uh, distributor pretty much. So it's, a, it's pretty much like a cartridge style, so you just kind of twist it right off. So let's try and do that and take a look at what's inside. Also, one thing to note is I do have an oil pan under the car because it is going to get a little messy, I think. We'll see. Okay, so after a fair bit of wrangling, I got this old filter off. This is the old one, this is the new one. Um, yeah, this one gave me quite a bit of trouble, but what ended up working best for me was using a Type B 76 millimeter oil filter wrench. You can buy these at AutoZone, they're like five bucks. Very useful. And as you can see there, the uh, the clearance for this is not not the best. It's very tight. You've got this hose thing that there, and you've got some stuff up there. You've got hoses on the other side, so it's a kind of a tight fit. And that's why the uh, the usual what is it? The usual uh, the usual oil strap wrench wrenches won't fit. So. Yeah, so I'm going to get that new oil filter on there, and then we're going to put in some oil. Okay, so now we've added the uh, new oil. What we're using here is a uh, Mobile One Full Synthetic 15W50. It's a little thick, but this should be good for this old engine. And this is one of the uh, Porsche spec oils, so I think it should be okay to use this. I used about a uh, five quarts of that full container, and then I also have another quart that I'm going to use to top off once we get this thing running but uh yeah so it's got oil now so the oil's good the fuel system is somewhat good I don't know about the fuel pump but the fuel system is intact and everything is sound so now the next step is going to be replacing these spark plugs as you can see here there are like what appear to be rat droppings here and uh it's kinda gross so I'm gonna before I even tar start taking anything apart I'm going to hit this whole like area and over there in the battery compartment especially. I'm going to hit it with a vacuum cleaner with my shop vac and get all that crud out and then we'll move on to removing the spark plugs. Okay, so after a quick vacuuming, it's a lot tidier here. Not perfectly clean, but a lot nicer than it was before. See, just now it's just dirt and not actually you no know, rat poop or anything like that. Shop vac, man. That is the uh, best investment you can make. Cleaned up so many nasty things with that vacuum. But yeah, so now let's uh, remove all these spark plugs and uh, see what the scoop is. Alright, so I removed all four spark plugs. Um, funny backstory on that first one. There was a uh, spark plug tool I bought from AutoZone a while back and it left this nasty rubber donut grommet thing on the spark plug. And I had such a hard time getting it out. I ended up heating up the spark plug socket to be in like red hot. And then that melted the little grommet thing enough for me to be able to screw the spark plug out. So that's the backstory for that. But uh, yeah, they all look pretty decent. I mean, they all, they're all the same brand. And they all just look a little old, but nothing too terrible. So we're going to replace them. All right, so all of the new spark plugs are in. All of the electrical connections are connected as they should be, like all the coil wires and all that. So now we're going to put in the battery. Okay, so the battery is in and I made sure to test that all the electronics work, which they seem to be. So now it's, now it's time for the last step, which is putting in some fresh gas. I just ran out and got some uh, fr five gallons of fresh 91 premium and we're going to put that in and then we're going to try and start it. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so there's gas in the car. Everything's wired up. Let's put it into the on position. Okay, I'm hearing stuff. Let's see, clutch pedals all the way pressed down. Transmission's in neutral. Let's try and start it. Nothing, okay.
Okay, so basically it's cranking but not starting. All right, well that's a wrap for this video. Um, we couldn't get it running, but that's okay. You know, getting an old car like this running isn't always the easiest thing. And you know, I'm just trying to show all the steps involved. So, you know, we've gone through the fuel system, made sure that the fuel pump is there, the, replaced the fuel filter, got new gas in there. We replaced the oil, replaced the oil filter, put in new spark plugs, put in a fresh battery. So we're, we've got our basics covered. So uh, next video, I'll be troubleshooting and you know, running some tests, uh, checking fuel pressure, making sure you know all the fuses and relays are good, and then we can maybe hopefully get it running the next time. So yeah, thanks for watching and tune in next time.